Hello everybody, this is Adam from Wheel Guns for Wheelmen, and today we're going to be doing a review of my latest acquisition, a 7-shot 32 H&R Magnum revolver by Tartar Arms called the Professional. And we're going to be going over both pros and also cons. Now, I actually wore it loaded with 32 H&R Magnum plus P Buffalo Bore uh, rounds. To Walmart just now on my way back from filming my latest video with it and so I'm just gonna show off the holster real fast and how it conceals so it conceals just fine outside the waistband holster really don't like this particular holster because there's the trigger is exposed the entire time now this is loaded so I'm going to unload it. Left the top round not chambered. Or top chamber not loaded, that's what I meant to say. And now completely empty. Um, and we can start discussing the revolver. I did film a video I'm going to be posting that shows the difference between the power uh, difference between 32 Smith & Wesson Long, this little guy, which this gun will chamber even though it is chambered for, wow, it's chambered for 32 H&R Magnum, which of course, and that, that is not an empty casing by the way, the bullet is just recessed, that's how they do 32 Smith & Wesson Long Wad Cutters. Uh, which are more of a target round. This is about three times as powerful as this little guy. Um, when we're talking foot-pounds of energy. I'm looking at about 350 foot-pounds of energy. It really depends on the barrel uh, length of the revolver. This has a three-inch barrel, so... I find that to be an optimal length for a uh, carry revolver. I used to have a three-inch SP-101 and 357 Magnum by, by Ruger. And that was a nice revolver. And then, but it was, it was a, built like a tank. It was much heavier than this guy. This guy's really light. I won't say, probably should look this up, but I'm not the most professional gun reviewer. You can go to someone else like James Reeves from TFB TV if you want that. Uh, I think this weighs maybe 20 ounces. But it's light. Doesn't need to be heavy though, because it's not 357 Magnum. It's 32 H and R Magnum, which I assure you has less spelt recoil, even with the Buffalo bore uh, loadings. Now, it's light. It's relatively easy to conceal. It's not a pocket gun. It's not a J frame, but it's relatively easy to conceal. You get seven rounds instead of six rounds of 38 Special or, or 357 Magnum, which is what you would expect in a cylinder this size, uh, having researched numerous revolvers in both 38 and 32. It seems that if it's a five round J frame, you're gonna be getting six rounds of 32, so one additional round. If it's a six round sized cylinder, you're gonna get seven rounds. So here you got one additional round from what you could expect out of a very compact six round 38 Special J-Frame. Now these grips, they're okay. They they look okay. Uh, they don't have a lot of grain that you can see for, for being wood grips. Um, and they do seem somewhat cheap. Uh, Charter Arms is kind of a knockoff of Smith & Wesson. Uh, and so they have to cut corners somewhere to get the price down. And so the materials feel cheap. I don't like that. And, and by materials, I also mean the finish. The finish itself is not the nicest. After only a, two or three times taking it out, only two times being this holster, it's already starting to get a couple scratches on it. Uh, it came with this slight imperfection right there. Uh, I noticed that right away. Um, the front sight is not the most precision, you know, um, in installed. <laughs> but it's functioned. Uh, the ejector hit it hard enough and everything seems to drop right out. Um, 
the trigger is not bad. Uh, I'd say it's comparable to the Rugers I've owned and other Charter Arms and Taurus. They're all anywhere from 11 and a half to about 14 pounds. Indeed, I would say Ruger has had the heaviest triggers of those three brands. Um, some of the LCRs have had quite heavy triggers, uh, and the SP-101 also had a relatively heavy trigger. I would say it's heavier than this one. So it's a relatively heavy trigger, but it's not outside the norm. It is, and I will check to make sure it's unloaded, um, the trigger is relatively smooth. Uh, there's not much grittiness, um, just a normal kind of wall you overcome when you uh, get the cylinder to rotate before you cock the hammer back all the way and then release it that last little bit. Um, so I would say it's, it's a fine gun for the over 400 bucks. It's not bad. Uh, again, I'd probably give it four out of five stars. And the main thing is just, you know, just the finish and the materials are just a little bit subpar. And then there's one other con, I would say. One thing I don't like about it. And I understand why they did it, but the groove sites back here, the space between, the, the, the gap between the two, you know, peaks of the groove, uh, are so wide compared to this narrow green high-vis front sight that there's a lot of space on either side of it. And so it's very hard for precision shooting. Uh, on the flip side, it's much easier to acquire it quickly um, and know that you're approximately on target and so I'm assuming they did that on purpose to make it so that you could easily find the green dot between the two grooves um, however at 10 yards even you really have to take your time to make sure the green dot is you know lined up perfectly because you can see the entire green dot when it's here when it's here when it's here <laughs> so there's a lot of room so you have to make sure there's the right amount of airspace on both sides of the green dot before you the front sight before you pull the trigger and otherwise you're you know half inch off at 10 yards left or right depending on which way you're aiming and again that could be intentional because it does assist in a quicker target acquisition this does appear to be a carry revolver for combat use for fighting use but um i, I would say that that's the, really only the real gripe other than you know i'm a little bit worried about how it's going to stand up especially finish wise uh, but also mechanically, there's, you know, a, a good amount of play here that you wouldn't get in a higher-end revolver. Um, yeah, but I would give it four out of five stars. I definitely don't regret the purchase. Uh, and so please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. You can also check out the video of me shooting... 32 Smith & Wesson Long, followed by a round of 32 h r Magnum to see the difference. And I have a first shot I'm going to be uploading as a short. Just the first cylinder that I shot through this. I was just filming it with my other hand. So please watch those videos if you want a more full review. I suck at video editing or else I'd put them all in one video. But I'm not inclined to learn how to do that at this point because my life's super busy. So please like and subscribe. Thank you.